to five. He must be capable of playing a, yeah, a fine game of StarCraft 2, so I'm excited to see what he's made of. He's going to be up against this titan of just the entire StarCraft scene, though. In the bottom left, as the Blue Terran, he is special. And in the top right side of Ice and Chrome, starting our final best of three of the day. We, of course, hope you guys had a lot of fun watching the games today. This man is hailing from Brazil. It is a Shakti. Well, you said it best. This matchup probably provides more chances at an upset than TDZ does. Zergs have been kind of, you know, muttering here and there about how they don't have very good ZVT all-ins, and I don't think it's <laughs> ever been a problem for Protoss in PVT. There's some cheeky ones, there's some disgusting ones, there's some good ones. Some are obviously better than others, but the variety of it can still make it scary, even for a guy like Special. You know, like, you get a Raven, but maybe they're going for uh, a charge all-in where you don't really get to utilize it as much. You don't get a Raven, that's exactly when they do the DT stuff. <laughs> this will be tricky, but Special looks like he's going to just take this game into his own hands and start things off aggressive. Yeah. He's opening up with the Reaper here, double gas already. And uh, Nano actually going for Nexus before Cord. is was the gold standard for the longest time. But actually these days I pretty much only ever see Core before Nexus. But he's bringing it back and I like it. Why the hell not? I love how so far Shakti is approaching this like he's the favorite. He's like, you know, I'll go Nexus <laughs> first, focus on the macro-oriented game. I'll scout for proxies, you know, make sure that pesky special is not cheesing me out of a macro game over here. I like it, man. It's a very confident start so far out of the Brazilian. We have seen some players who are confident that, you know, one of the ways that they quote unquote cheese is just be super, super macro, like uh, Masa facing some of the, um, you know, the best Koreans will actually go for three CC builds. And it's like, okay, that's not the approach we were expecting, but maybe that can give you a big enough boost. So maybe he's just actually quite confident. He did see that special wasn't proxying him. He still was going for a one base, and that is still scary information. He hasn't gotten back there to see if it's command center at all, or if it was right up to 111. So this is a double Reaper into at least one Hellion. It could also be a second Hellion as well. This Reaper, Reaper, Hellion, Hellion stuff has been popping up more and more. That's not going to be the case. It's going to be just double Reaper into single Hellion. Special could pretty much suicide this in the natural because uh, Shakti actually didn't build a pylon in the natural. He's going to warp in right now, but it's so late. That obviously means he's not going to have a shield boundary. Uh, Shakti is actually in danger of losing quite a few probes here, and even losing three or four or five probes is super painful. Ooh, that's going to be tough to stop. One Reaper does go down. The Hellion tries to get a good lineup. Not really finding it so far. Third Stalker pops out, and then they get time to help out here, and that one last Reaper is going to be the only kill. Oh, two probes. Two yep. probes killed in total. That's actually really good for Nano, because at first, uh, damn it, Shakti, sorry guys, like he's playing under a different account. He's kind of using both names, but that's actually really good, because normally if you don't have a wall there, double Reaper, double Hellion, they're able to dive on top of your probes quite quickly, and you don't have that much DPS in these Stalkers. Now one of the Stalkers got sent in the wrong direction as well by the grenade. I'm really impressed that he only lost two probes there, but I'm also a little bit upset that Special didn't just stick around in the natural. But I guess he just really wanted to get the scout, right? Get the confirmation of what he was actually playing against. Yeah, he had not gotten that up until then. So certainly that was a little bit of the reasoning there. He does get a medevac, which again, usually almost always denotes some type of push or drop. When we look at the units that he currently has and the map that we're on, it doesn't really look like a good setup for that. So maybe having to change his plans based off his scouting. I actually really like this start for Shakti. I, I like it a lot and I love the way he's playing this off two gases so far. Now, this is something I actually want to bring up as well while we were talking about how it's easier for Protoss to upset a superior Terran player than this with Zerks. I don't really want to start a discussion about what's the easier <laughs> race, you know what I mean? You know, I wouldn't do my Protoss brothers dirty like that, but I do think that a good old eight or a 10 gate setup of Zealots and Stalkers it's not the hardest thing to play in the world. You know, you stay low on gas, you warp in a whole bunch of units, you keep your money low, and you create an economic advantage for yourself. And this is actually something that's already really hard to deal with as Terran players. And I feel that that's kind of mm -hmm. exactly what uh, Shakti is doing so far. I would love to make sure that he doesn't forget charge, but he's got a good setup going. There is I mean, definitely potential in this game, right? 
we're not seeing any incredible screw ups, right? Like sometimes you get into these games, you don't know who you're casting and it's like, okay, they were very late. They were very supply blocked. They were, they are doing a build I just don't think is actually ideal. And you kind of get a, a, you know, you feel out how good they can be, but yeah, I don't see anything really going wrong. It's all good decision-making, taking chances that are paying off here and um, looking well set up to actually take control over the map a little. So yep. I do think that special has to be a little wary, but he is just defending until he's ready to push. Once all those upgrades are done, then we get to really see what Shakti's made out of. It's three bases of two against two at this point, though. And I, what I love as well is that uh, Shakti is even doing this with the Robo. So he's got an observer or two. He has that one observer on the left side of his main base. It's going to get the heads up that the Raven is coming his way. If if Shakti is able to get like four or five Zealots on the other side of the map and he sends those into the natural the moment that Special leaves with his push, I actually think he's just going to win the game. He's really in a very good spot. Now, of course, you can mess up with the army. You need to do a good job kiting here. But there is so much potential here for the Brazilian Protoss player. I agree. He set himself up well, but can he handle the actual aggression? It's always going to be the real test. The Raven comes into the top side. I'm not sure the Observer is actually able to see it. So it's just yeah. a little bit too far north. Mm -hmm. I think he just barely missed it. And that's a bit unfortunate because mm -hmm. all that Special really needs is a good auditor in the middle line. And then the Stalkers are not really properly kiting. Uh, there's the War Prism now on the, in, on the way as well. We can already see this Raven actually doing quite a bit of damage. And this hurts, guys, because if we look at that bank, this is where, as a Protoss player, you want to warp in those seven, eight additional Zealots. And this is where you want to be kiting with your Stalkers as well. So this is a really good move by Special. And can we get some Zealot magic? The Guardian Shield is good. Is the Zealot count high enough, though? That's kind of what I wonder about. That's not so far. He's going to need another round of Zealots uh, very, very quickly. No shield batteries to fall back to either. And 10 probes have gone down to the overall auditor oh, harassment. Oh. He's starting to lose his stalkers, which are really crucial not to lose out here. I think he just lost his buffer and lost control of this fence. He might still defend overall, but uh, this was the make it or break it. This was his test. Can he hold the first attack by special? And the answer is no. Oh, that's a shame. He really had a beautiful setup. He honestly had a super good setup going. He's just going to tap out. GG gets called. Special will take game one. Oh, if, if that Raven is a little bit for, further towards the south side of the screen and that Observer spots it, he's able to warp in two, three Stalkers at home, keep the Raven at bay, focus on his main army in just buying, even if it's 10 seconds, it makes all the difference in the world. He gets another warp in round. He's able to keep mining from his main base. Three bases against two. I, I, I like this setup a lot. It's, it's a real shame that he died to that push because that wasn't even that big of a push. And there weren't that many Widow Mines. It was just... It's unfortunate because I think if you resume that game from replay, that's kind of a tough game to win. Like if that Protoss in that spot is Arstom or Drogo or Showtime, they're going to do very well against that push of special. Mm -hmm. But, you know, actually, that's a good reference point. And we thought uh, Harsom got into some good positions and you Thermal's first push would still catch him off guard or distract him with a Viking in the main and he would still go down. And um, Harsom's definitely no slouch, though. We see even amongst the best Protosses that even despite having a good setup, it's really about the first push and how they handle that. And unfortunately, he just wasn't quite ready. I really do think it was a matter of just a few more zealots and that force field was a little more effective. Mm -hmm. It's so close. Yeah, the zealots were also a bit clumped up behind the stalkers. I think that was a little bit unfortunate as well. It would have been a lot cooler to see all of them just go through immediately. Uh, I would also say that maybe the stalker to zealot ratio wasn't totally what I'd like to see. I There's a couple of protosses that like to go seven, eight stalkers. So they have a couple of stalkers in the main base to deal with either that liberator or that viking or that raven. And then you have five stalkers to one shot marine while they are being uh, sent towards the other side of the map. And even if you lose one stalker, you can still probably one shot marines because there's no combat shield but he was at like 10 plus stalkers and mostly in his main army to defend i kind of just like to see zealot 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 there because the zealots you know you can't really mess them up and they're gonna do really well against that push as long as there are not too many widow mines and with only two mines then you definitely want to have more zealots there than you want to have stalkers yeah i mean it can be a little more complicated sometimes than that but i think that was definitely a push or more zealots uh than stalkers would have would have worked out well but uh, now we're on to Everdream, the shorter maps here. In the top right, taking that first game, he's the Blue Terran Special. 
Ever Dream has not been kind to us today, to be totally honest. Let's <laughs> hope it changes here. In the bottom left side, look at the main base of the Brazilian Protoss player who got himself in an awesome position. Unfortunately, wasn't able to capitalize on it. It is Shakti. This macro looked totally fine. I didn't really see any big slip ups. I don't know if he could have gotten a bit faster of the Zealots, not just like more Zealots, but a bit faster to like not have to work with that choke because it can be very difficult for any Protoss, but it actually looked, uh, as you kept saying, like a very good game, very strong mechanics, but it wasn't also a game that was really tested. Like despite Special going for double gas, which he's doing again here, he didn't really throw uh, Shakti off at all. Um, he tried a little bit with the Reaper Hellion thing, but that was really not dedicated. The follow-up wasn't any dedicated Banshee harassment. We might see a different game if Special does commit more here, and we might see him commit more because he's up one, because it's Everdream. Uh, I, I'm totally with you. It wasn't hard for Shakti to get in the good position, so I'm not like necessarily praising him for like, wow, that was so impressive how he warped in three Nexus and got 10 gateways of two gas. It's not that part, but it's the confidence that he was doing it with and at the same time still being somewhat active with the Stalkers, having the Stalkers in the right spot on the other side of the map. Uh, you know, a lot of Protoss players will start slowing down at 52, 53 probes because they're like, this is too good to be true, you know? Like, I didn't get rid of mine drop. There were no benches showing up. I'm not losing anything. Like, it can't be that good for me, right? And that's kind of when you stop pro production and things can start falling apart a little bit as well because you suddenly don't have as much as you should have. Like, he just made... All the correct calls is just the execution of the stalker movement and then dealing with the raven in the main base and as follow up the actual push uh, that that's something that he could definitely still improve upon but when it comes to build order when it comes to setup when it came to uh initial unit positioning i think all of it was very good for shakti well it's gonna be a very different game special kind of setting up the best of three first i don't do very much with it let you get a false insecurity then i go into a map that's favorable for this specific push something that his best buddy TY has done, innovations done. It's been probably a thing on the Korean ladder, I gotta imagine a lot. Literally one base. One base kind of fell out because it is so easily scouted. You have a probe scout that it's, you know, one base for an extended period of time and Adept eventually gets a shade and see still no command center. And it just, it hasn't really worked since, um, you know, like 2017 when it was really, really popular, but it's come back. I mean, if you can execute it correctly, you can micro your units, you can save your Liberator and your tank before they get to the other side of the map. It is no doubt difficult to deal with. You have to first know how to deal with it and then actually execute the defense. Yep, and on top of that, you need to know that it's coming. <laughs> and that's something that I don't think he is going to figure out. There's quite a few Marines that could be a little heads up. You know, I was screaming while you were uh, explaining indeed the TY and stuff I've done this game. I was like, charge, go charge first. <laughs> like charge is so amazing against these kind of silly builds as well. Because charge is also able to research a lot quicker than Blink is. Uh, unfortunately, it seems like Shakti is just not thinking about the possibility of this being a straight up one base all in. And just, I actually don't even want to look anymore. Like I, I've seen this before. <laughs> I've been part of this dance and I didn't like it. I was totally out of rhythm. This is probably the worst case scenario. Shakti really hasn't gotten any scouting on it. His adept stayed at home, ready to defend against any of the early uh, mm. harassment, just pure harassment of the Reaper. It's not that. It's actually dedicating to a push. And it's just oh, going to be a complete surprise. He's going to lose a gateway. He's going to lose a shield battery pretty quickly. His Robo is in a safe position, but oh god, then he goes for third Nexus. <laughs> yeah, no, he's playing a little robotic over here. Did not scout at all. Going to try to get extra batteries, but that will never make the difference. We are going to get battery overcharge here, so look at these stalkers go. Well, the Stalkers can't even survive that. Two tanks in a super good position already. And I am afraid that this is going to be a very unfortunate ending of the day here. The first match of Group B in the Latin American DreamX Summer Masters. Uh, this is something that you just don't stop anymore. No, you have to get such a better start to this and then also keep it going. It's very difficult and not scouting it was uh, just...